Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Ripley. I'm with the Strategic Marketing Group and I'd like to welcome all the Traeger practitioners to the video conference that we're doing today and I'd like to um, thank Tracy Eno uh, for inviting me. I've worked with Tracy a little bit. I can see she's on the call as well. Um, welcome to Tracy and all the folks that are here. We had 17 people sign up. That's great attendance and I thank you all. I'm hoping that we can teach you all a little bit about creating your strategic and tactical marketing plan. And I think that it's really important that this is where we get started. You know, Tracy and I, when we were talking about creating this series of programs, we talked about different ideas and obviously social media is a hot button for people right now. But you know, it takes maybe you need a little bit to get into the basics of things before you actually dig into a particular tactic. You know, without a strategy, executing tactics could be a problem. Uh, you know, I'm also a man of action, so uh, you know, you, you wonder if you should be doing something anyway, and you feel kind of weird if you're not doing something. And hopefully, all of you all are doing some sort of marketing for your business anyway. So this will give you an opportunity to step back, do a little planning. And, you know, as we said in the write up, you know, failing to plan is planning to fail. So what we're going to talk about today, as I promised, we're going to talk about the strategic and tactical marketing plan and how to develop your strategic and tactical marketing plan. And then the next thing you'll want to do, obviously, is execute it. And the first thing we'll talk about is the strategic plan, which is really what you're going to say, what your message is, um, how you're going to say it, what is the media that you're going to use, and then who to say it to. So um, and let me stop here for a second. I sent out an email to everybody to the email address that I had that you would use to sign up, and I included a copy of this presentation. You have to go to my website and click on it uh, to download the presentation. So, um, you know, if you haven't gotten that, um, you can you can step away and, you know, while I'll uh, hold on here for a second and um, go to your email and check and, you know, download this. It shouldn't take you too long. There are, you know, click to go to the website and then download the two pieces and, you know, they should download relatively quickly. They're just Microsoft Word documents. But this is what I'm going to use to go through. And this is what you can use as well. I mean, this can be a living document for you as to, you know, putting together your strategic and tactical marketing plan. One of the things that I often talk about with people is getting together and working on this together. And even for you all, you know, if there were a group of practitioners who got together and worked on it together, I'm sure it would be a lot better than just working on it by yourself. So, you know, that may be something to take it to the next step would be to get together with, you know, four or five or six, seven people and actually pull this together. And I don't know if I'm, you know, going too far here, but maybe that's something I could help you out with if you um, wanted to do that, you know, take half a day or a day and work on it individually or work on it as a group. Um, you know, Henry Ford, you know, believed in the map principle of the mastermind that, you know, when you got more people together, you would really do a lot better than people, those, you know, people individually. So um, that may be something to think about as well. And we'll, I'll open up the uh, microphones for everybody to talk at certain points. And that might be something that we could talk about also. So your, you know, your strategic and tactical marketing plan, what you say, how you say it, who you say it to. So, it, it, and another way to, to think about it, you know, as in what you say, how you say it, who you say it to, and the way Dan Kennedy refers to it. And Dan Kennedy is a marketing guru that I follow, and I would encourage you to check out Dan Kennedy as well. Uh, Dan Kennedy. Um, what you say would be your message. How you say it would be the media. And then who you say it to would be your market. So that's just another way to remember it, media, market, message, whatever it might be, this is going to be your strategic marketing plan. And if you've ever been involved in any strategic planning, 
you know, one of the first things that you'll do is you'll do what's called a SWOT, S-W-O-T, S-W-O-T-T in some cases, where you're referring to internal and external factors that you have to consider before you develop your plan. And we'll do much the same thing when we're creating our strategic marketing plan and that we're going to want to look at the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and trends. And that's what SWOT stands for. It's for strengths and weaknesses, which are really internal. What are the things that you do well? What are the things that you do poorly as a company? And then opportunities and threats are more external. You know, things like you know, economic conditions can be a threat. It might be an opportunity right now as well as the economy improves. So you have to think about th those things. So what we're going to do when we're creating our marketing strategic plan or our strategic marketing plan is we want to think about our prospects and, and what they really think about when they consider purchasing our product. You know, and for you guys, that would be your services. You know, it's product, services, whatever it might be. So we want to learn a little bit about the, the prospect to begin with. And we have to think about our customers and prospects and, you know, become a little introspect, introspective here. But, you know, what's our customer value hierarchy? What are the things that are most important to a typical prospect when purchasing our services? So we have to think about, you know, obviously, you know, results would be one of the things, you know, one of the things may be levels of pain, you know, maybe frustration, that sort of thing. So you have to think about that. And then the next thing you would want to do is think about what emotions or feelings your typical prospect might have before, during, or after they receive your services. You know, anger, fear, confusion, that sort of thing. You know, think, get into the mind of your prospect or your customer. And then under what circumstances do they start thinking about purchasing your services, you know, and that, that may be health reasons. It may be a referral, you know, probably right now, a lot of the business that you get comes from referrals and you want it to continue that way. And we want to talk about when we develop our strategic marketing plan, how we're going to get more referrals, really working on that. But we also want to think about how we can be more um, open to customers and outgoing to customers to invite them in. So you want to really think about these three questions, your customer value hierarchy, what are your hot buttons, you know, what are the emotions, and then one, what are the circumstances that the typical prospects start to think about purchasing your services. So those are these are all things that we have to think about. And then we want to kind of summarize your typical prospect's situation in general terms. You know, you've got a typical prospect, and I know that may be for some people something that you, you know, may want to shy away from in, in stereotyping too much or whatever. But you've got to start somewhere. And this is the most, you know, the, the best place to start. You know, what's the typical? What's 50%? What's 80%? You know, there's the Pareto principle where you get 80% of your profits from 20% of your companies or, you know, 80% of your customers from 20% of your marketing efforts. It would be nice if we just knew what 20% it was. And you can figure that out, certainly. But then here's the things that you can, you know, here's a list to help you summarize the things that are valuable valuable and important to your typical prospect. You know, and not all of these are important to your business. You know, I, I certainly understand that. But these are just some kind of brainstorming ideas to think about, you know, your customer values. What do they value? Better communication, better service, better warranty, better payment terms, easier to use, that sort of thing. You know, what are the most important things to them? So this kind of helps you along those lines. So here, you know, here you're just trying to, again, figure out what's important to your typical prospect. So we're cr trying to get in to the customer and prospect mind, you know, and I'll kind of use those interchangeably. So, you know, one of the things that you do when you do a SWOT is you do surveys. 
and you know how deeply you want to go into this and you know sometimes you can do these surveys maybe when you're taking care of somebody if you'd like you know or you're talking to somebody and just in general and it doesn't have to be the specific act of doing surveys but one of the things that I also do is I, you know, call for for clients is I call current clients, past clients, dissatisfied clients, you know, people that have been maybe prospects for a while but haven't made a decision to purchase any services or just prospects in general. You know, try to learn some of these things yourself yourself by reaching out because one of the things that that happens and when I, I teach customer relations at our local community college and one of the books that we read in customer relations is raving fans uh, by Ken Blanchard you know and one of the things that he talks about a lot is that often your customers will just not tell you if they have any issues or, you know, if you have people, you know, people that you've talked to, but have decided not to purchase your services, they may not, they may not tell you why. And, you know, and on the other hand, you may have lots of great customers also, but you want to, you know, you want to learn from them what they really love about what you do, you know, so you can also, you know, this is what we're trying to do here is we're trying to prepare to create our message. So we want to learn as much as we can before we create our message. And they did some editing on this. And I think I've, I, I, had, I have some customized versions of this for different industries. And I was trying to merge different pieces. And I think we have some questions. You know, if you see where it says title industry, I apologize for that. Really, that should be any industry. And that should be your industry. Um, I thought I had purged all those things, and I think I got a two, couple of duplicate files, and I didn't get everything out and get it um, the way I'd like it. I sincerely apologize for that, and I'll actually, uh, I know there's another file that has it right. I'll try to get that one to you in follow-up. But there's a lot of questions to ask here, and the top, you know, biggest frustrations you know, biggest issues. And, and this, you know, this doesn't even have to come into just your services. And I think that, you know, you would, you would consider, because I know in talking with Tracy, um, sometimes people come to her after they've exhausted other more traditional approaches. And if that's a, you know, if that's a customer that is a big part of your total customers, then you would even want to maybe find out, you know, in the whole healing industry, if, you know, healing is what you're focusing on, you know, what are some of the other alternatives and why would people come to you? And, you know, how can you, you know, how can you get them to maybe skip some of the steps that have been fruitless for many people who've worked for you and get them to come to you right away and be more proactive, that sort of thing, in terms of creating your message. So, um, you know, and for you all, education is such an important part of the whole process. And we'll, we'll talk about this. I'll talk about the marketing formula, which, you know, education is one of the elements. So, um, you know, also, you know, when you're asking these questions, you know, find, find out what was it that put them over the tipping point? What bit of information that they learned put them over the tipping point? And, you know, often that will be a referral. So, um, you know, and how do we get more referrals and that sort of thing? So there's a, you know, you have a big list of questions to ask. You don't have to ask all the questions, you know, pick four or five or six. You know, if you have an email, you know, if you want to get complicated about this and, you know, take it to the next level, if you have an email list already, you can use a service like SurveyMonkey. Um, it's, you know, S-U-R-V-E-Y monkey survey monkey.com and they do um they allow you to do up to 100 surveys for free so if you have an email list and you send it out to a couple hundred people you know you'll, you might have to send three four five hundred people to get a hundred responses but you certainly could you know maybe take 10 of these questions the 10 questions that you want to know the answers to from your current customers and um you know go out and ask them, you know, and there again, you know, I bring this up, you know, this would also be a good group project, you know, where you got survey information 
from many people at one time, you know, where you could get, you know, they say, I, I take any survey that we can get is good because you'll get feedback from it that'll be helpful. They say that you need to have at least 200 surveys to get a good statistical sample. Um, I'm not always after, you know, I'm not, number one priority isn't getting a statistical sample. My number one priority is learning as, I, as much as I can about the market. And you can do that with less than um, 200. You know, here we go. Here we go back to thinking about your competition, you know, and thinking your, about your competition in a broad way. You know, do some competitive surveys as well. You know, and one of the best ways to do that is to just call. Um, I was working with the client. Actually, this client rents offices. They have an office building, and they have they rent offices to people. And we have some competitors around. And you know, to do the research, we just called the competitors and found out what services they offered and how they treated people. And you know, this is you know right off the top of my head. We just did this last week. So you learn. You know, we learned what was good, what was bad. We learned that it was generally bad. You know that they're gonna, you're gonna get voicemail, and you're not gonna get quick callbacks and that sort of thing. So, you know, anything that you can do to improve the level of service, you know, so you can um, really say why would you buy from, um, you know, from this provider versus another provider? That's gonna provide you some great information about the message that you want to have, you know. And here's some tips on making the calls. And you can, you know, you can do that um, yourself again. And, you know, I'm, I'm going into this in, in deep detail. And what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to try to give you um, a little bit so you can, you know, as they say, eat an elephant a bite at a time and not go crazy here and um, hit mental gridlock and not do anything because that's the worst thing that can happen. You know, you want to do something and it's always better to do something than it is to do nothing in the marketing world you know because if if you learn then you know as long as you don't spend a lot of money and go crazy and that's where you have to you know have a a smart side as well but you know if you if you just say you know if you said to me that you know the first thing you want to do is a facebook page and you're going to go out and do it and do it right away and all that sort of thing I'd say, great, go for it. I'm getting a little off track here. But, uh, you know, this is, the th this is the thought that should go into it. And, the, you know, when you make marketing decisions, you know, and that, you know, the biggest mistake that small businesses make when they're uh, marketing is they engage in marketing tactics without first having a strategy, then it doesn't work. And then they say, oh, marketing doesn't work. Well, they, it didn't work because they didn't know, you know, what their message should be, what media they should use, and what market target market they should go after. And when we go, let me go back to that um, while we're bringing that up. You know, one of the key things, one of the key questions that you want to ask, and um, you know, I can't, I can't help, you know, emphasizing this is that you want to find out where they go to get information about your product or service. You know, where do they go to find solutions? And, and you know, I've got to believe that, you know, one of those is going to be their friends, relatives, that sort of thing. But another huge place is going to be online, you know, which just, you know, when, when you hear that, it begs that you make sure that your website is as good as it possibly can be and, you know, that you're doing the right things to position that accordingly. So, you know, you're, you're probably going to learn that from this, but I still think that it's good. It's worth going through the exercise because one of the things that you'll find is that you're going to learn 